Okay, just thought I'd quickly go through um, an extra example of finding the maxima, minima, and set of points. So a similar sort of question to question six on your assignment. So we've got this function um, of x and y, so uh, essentially two variate, two variate function. And if we quickly just plot this, um, it looks like this. Not sure how well we'll be able to see here, but um, if you can have a look a little bit there. So what we would expect is we have a local minimum over here. So that occurs um, around where x, y equals zero. And then we have a local maximum. I think, have I got my things? Actually, no, sorry, that was a local maximum. Then we've got a local minimum um, along the y-axis. Um, and so where y equals about 2 and x equals 0. And then um, we have also should have a few saddle points here. So I can see one just there. Um, and then I can see one over here. As well, so I'm not not sure how well um, that's coming up, but yeah. <clears throat> so I mean, you know, having a graph is a good good way of sort of being able to expect where those things are. So first thing we want to do is find our nabla f. Now the reason why nabla f is useful, remember, nabla f points in the direction of the steepest gradient. So given any sort of point on a surface, you know, if we take this nabla, this, this point, the nabla f, the direction of nabla f at that point gives us the highest gradient. So if nabla f is zero, so a zero vector, then that means the maximum gradient that it can be is level. And so therefore that must be one of these special points, either a local maximum, local minimum, or um, also a settle point. <clears throat> okay, so taking number F. Now in this case, this two variant case, this is just going to be um, delta X, sorry, delta of F dx and delta F dy. So in this case, um, differentiating with respect to x, keeping y as a constant, gives us 6xy. <coughs> 6xy here. Um, this becomes 0. This is negative 6x. And then 0 and 0 here. And then for the y values, we're going to have 3x squared plus 3y squared. 0. Uh, minus 6y and yeah <clears throat> okay so and what we want to know is when um, when is this simultaneously 0 so we have to say when does nabla f equal 0 0 <clears throat> okay so um, looking at those values I've got to solve so I can take um, this fx equals 0 so, and factorizing this gives me 6x outside of y minus 1. So this equals 0 either where um, x equals 0 or, or y equals 1. <coughs> um, and then looking at fy equals 0 where we have, can I do any factorization here? Um, so I have 3x squared plus uh, 3y outside of uh, y minus 2. <coughs> um, so for this to be 0, I can either have x equals 0, y equals 0, um, can also have the points uh, x equals 0, y equals 2, <coughs> okay, making that equal 0. Or if I rearrange it, um, I also get this, that, uh, 3y squared 
minus 6y equals negative 3x squared. <clears throat> okay, so clearly um, there's going to be a number of points for which this function here equals 0. <clears throat> but what I can do is I need, you know, if I recall that um, this side is only going to be 0 either when x equals 0 or y equals 1, then I can make some substitutions and put that in there. So um, <clears throat> if x equals 0, then from before we clearly just get that y that equals 0 or y equals 2. If y equals 1, um, then from that I get 3 minus 6 gives me uh, negative 3 equals negative 3 x squared. So there I get that x can be plus or minus 1 there as well. So, <clears throat> putting all of this together, what do I have? I have that this will equal 0 when we have either um, x equals 0 and y equals 0. So that's one of my critical points. I'm going to put my critical points up here. So my critical points are 0, 0. So x equals 0, y equals 0, x equals 0, y equals 2. Okay. And then I've also got these points where y equals 1, and so x equals plus or minus 1. So therefore I get that negative 1, 1, and 1. So that's the information I have, and I need to evaluate these critical points. Okay, so to do that, I need to, um, firstly, I can use this d for the second derivative test. So remember, d is equal to fxx times fyy minus fxy squared. Um, and we have, we looked at the different cases of what D means um, in terms of whether we have local mass or local min. So, um, let's have a look at what happens at each of these points. Firstly, <coughs> um, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Uh, so we need fx, x and fyy. And fx, y. So looking at, since this is um, fx, so first derivative with respect to x, differentiating with respect to x again, gives me 6y minus 6. Differentiating this function with respect to y again, gives me 6y minus 6 as well. Differentiating this with respect to y gives me 6x, which would be the same as what I get when I differentiate this with respect to x. So putting these into d, um, I get 6, get that d, it's equal to 6y minus 6 squared minus 6x squared. <clears throat> so I can evaluate with these critical points at 0, 0 I get this is just going to be negative 6 all squared which gives me 36 at 0, 2 the D by the way 0, 2, putting in x equals 0 gives me 0 here, y equals 2 gives me 12 minus 6, which gives me um, 6 squared, so this is d equals 36 as well. <coughs> um, look at negative 1, 1. Uh, yeah. <coughs> so negative 1, 1. 
um, gives me x equals 1 here, so that's going to be minus 36, sorry, yeah, that's going to be negative 6 squared, which is minus 36, and y equals 1 gives me 0, so this means d will be negative 36. And 1, 1 here gives me, again, 36 here, and this will give me 0, so it's going to be negative 36 here. <clears throat> okay, so remember when we're evaluating these points, if d is negative, then we have a saddle point. So both of these are saddle points. <clears throat> okay, when d is greater than 0, we then look at whether fxx or fyy are positive or negative. So um, when fxx, sorry, at this point here, we have fxx is going to be equal to negative 6, so it's negative. So we have that d is greater than 0 and um, fxx is negative, and so I believe that gives us a local max. And then at 0, 2, um, we see that we have d is positive, but also if we chuck in y equals 2, we get 12 minus 6, and this becomes positive, and so therefore here we have a local min. <clears throat> okay, so um, we can think about these similar to the second derivative test, where, you know, if the um, second derivative is positive, then that means we have this curvature, that means the derivatives increasing, etc., and that tends to give you local mins, um, and then whereas if the derivative is decreasing, it gives you local maxes. These saddle points, you know, <clears throat> we imagine if, if this is negative, then it usually means that um, either fxx and fyy are of different sign, okay, so sort of with respect to one of the derivatives is increasing, or one of the derivatives is a minimum, one of them is a max. Or alternatively, it means that this um, is larger. So the change with respect to the derivatives going in either direction is larger than one or the other, and so we don't get um, local maxima or minima there. Okay. <clears throat>